So I see Ina, Ina Backus is with us. Hi, Ina, welcome. I'm uh, joining the committee from inside the committee room today and talking through a mask. So <laughs> we'll try to see if you can hear me clearly enough. It is so interesting sitting here with all of us wearing masks, watching people who are maskless. <laughs> like je feeling jealous. Right? <laughs> yes, highly, highly yeah. jealous at this point. Yeah. So, um, uh, so welcome. Uh, our our hope is for you to walk us through the governor's recommended uh, initiatives around uh, healthcare workforce development, uh, or workforce development generally, perhaps. But healthcare workforce is, of course, what we're particularly interested in. And I'm going to turn it over to you to uh, help us with that. We'll entertain questions along the way. Thank you very much. Uh, for the record, Ina Backus, Director of Health Reform uh, in the Agency of Human Services. And this uh, presentation is certainly a follow along to the um, overview that I provided for the Healthcare Workforce uh, Development Strategic Plan earlier on in the session. Um, I am uh, very happy to have the opportunity to share with you um, how the governor's budget proposals on a number of areas um, create a comprehensive approach uh, to improving uh, nurse and healthcare workforce in our state. So if I could, I'll go ahead and share my screen. That'd be fine. And please let me know if you can see the presentation. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. And if you can take it to full screen. It's actually easier to, yeah, there you go. Yeah. There. That's good. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So consistent with the, um, Sorry, I'll just go back here. It really wanted me to give subtitles a try, which was making it so I couldn't see my screen. Uh, consistent with the Healthcare Workforce Development Strategic Plan, uh, the governor has proposed an initiative specific to recruitment, retention, and training. And the governor proposed a total of 33 million in the FY22 budget adjustment to support a program of recruitment, retention, and training uh, for um, nurses, as well as the health and human services providers. Uh, this program we propose would be a needs-based program and would allow employers flexibility in how to uh, propose and allocate funding within the terms and conditions of the program. And that would allow for recruitment or retention bonuses, uh, funds to be utilized for training needs, to include uh, potentially utilize, utilizing funds um, to support international nurse recruitment or other creative employer identified incentives for recruiting and retaining the workforce. We propose that there would be uh, program limits so as to um, so as to provide for a service agreement um, for those staff who would be receiving uh, retention or recruitment uh, bonuses and thereby create consistency across the system and minimize system-wide inequity inequities and um, this could be for a limited period of time um, that the service agreement would be in place. Further, the governor proposed in the FY23 budget uh, $3 million to continue and expand existing scholarships for Vermonters and out-of-state individuals to attend nursing programs at Vermont colleges and universities. And this would include Norwich uh, University. That's been a question um, that we've heard a number of times. And would, this would include students that are pursuing practical nursing certificates, associate's degrees in nursing, 
or Bachelor of Science degree in nursing. And students would similarly here agree to work as a nurse in Vermont for a minimum of one year following licensure for each year of the scholarship awarded. And as you're likely familiar, this is how the nurse uh, scholarship program does operate today. This is the scholarship program that was established in, I believe, through Act 155 of 2020. And again, this is an expansion of that program with the additional in investment of funds. The governor also proposed an additional $2 million to expand loan repayment for nurses who live in Vermont and are permanently employed by Vermont health care providers and employers. And with this uh, proposal, the nurses, again, would agree to a service obligation to live and work in Vermont for each year of loan payment provided. And this is, this is certainly a theme in the, in the proposal and in the package overall that there um, is a service component uh, to the programs that are offered or in the case of tax uh, incentives, there is um, a residency component um, and a uh, Vermont employer component to that um, proposal. And, here further, um, the governor's budget proposes a $1,000 refundable income tax credit for nurses as well as nurse educators. And this um, in total is a $15.4 million estimated investment. The tax credit is available to those nurses and nurse educators that would be living and working as permanent employees for Vermont, for Vermont health provider employers and would include registered nurses, licensed practical nurses, licensed nurse assistants, and nurse educators as well. And can we interrupt you with a question, Ina? I think Representative uh, well, I have yeah. there's several questions, yeah. She also, she actually just answered it. I had never seen anywhere, because uh, it's not on the slide and hadn't thought to ask, but you just now said that the, the cost of that tax expenditure would be 15.4 million in terms of the budget, right? Is that correct? That is my understanding of the estimated um, uh, the estimated budget impact, yes. Okay, thank you. Representative Cordes. Thank you. Can you hear me, Ina? I can. Okay. I am noticing that we're not talking about um, advanced practice nurses here. Um, it, it looks like they're not included in scholarships, loan repayment, tax incentives. Um, and I think in one of the, I don't have the bill number, um, but I think in another program, um, they were left out of something that uh, was supporting primary care providers. Was there any discussion about including advanced practice nurses in any of these? Uh, let me let me go back to the team before I answer definitively, but it, advanced practice nurses, advanced practice registered nurses, correct? Yes, advanced, but they're nurse practitioners. They, um, you know, they're, we all know of the primary care provider sh um, shortage crisis in addition to um, the nurses that we're talking about now. So um, I just want to make sure that advanced practice nurses have opportunity as well. Thank you. I, I'll, I'll follow up on that point to be sure that I'm clear on, on how that is being handled. Thank you. Uh, the, um, we are also promoting Vermont as uh, the best place, place to live and work as a nurse. And through this is through collaboration between the Agency of Human Services and the Agency of Commerce and Community Development. And the focus here is to leverage existing platforms and to establish new marketing campaigns that can draw nurses from other states, 
as well as internationally, amplify the full range of incentives for living and working as a nurse in Vermont, including those incentives that um, I've just provided an overview about, the, certainly bringing those into the program as well, uh, scholarships, loan repayment, tax incentives, further amplifying the fast track to licensure, which I believe you've had discussion about with the Office of Professional Regulation, which does speed path to licensure for nurses coming to work in the state of Vermont, and uh, and also um, uh, utilizes uh, relocation programs to support uh, nurses and, and family members coming to live and work in the state of Vermont. So this is very much a cross um, department and agency initiative to utilize existing resources and expertise and to create a specific, um, a specific campaign uh, directed again at nurses, um, nurses who would be interested in living and working in our state. Representative Page has a question. Yes, can you go back to the previous slide and can you explain what the $1,000 refundable income tax credit is? Is that after you um, um, submit your, your tax information? Is this for, is this for itemizing or, or how, how does that actually work? Uh, it's, it's a refundable income tax credit for nurses and nurse educators. I'm sure that the, um, if you're interested in having a deep dive on how it works, I know that no. the tax, depar tax department would be happy to do that. But I mean, do you just, is there something that you have to apply for? Is it, is, is it, I mean, is it going to be easy for a nurse to apply for a, a thousand dollar refund? I mean, like so many of these things, you know, they're, they're not the, right off the top of your tax. You know, is that how it's going to work? Tax liability. I think it comes up. You owe 1500 in taxes. I think the thousand will go to it, so you owe 500. I think. You don't really have to answer all those questions when you're filling out your taxes. Yeah. You know, did you do this? Do you have children? It would probably be another question. Okay. So you're you're itemizing your taxes, yeah. probably. Well, I think what his question well, is. We may we we, we, we we should probably ask someone who actually understands this. But uh, to I answer the question. I, I guess what I'm asking is, well, yeah, is understand. this something that's really going to work? Well, I don't know, and and it would be something that would absolutely be uh, evaluated by the Ways and Means Committee, who are, are familiar with refundable tax credits, and 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 you know, it's you not know. a great deal of money, but you know. well, the total amount that the budget would impact it is estimated fifteen million yeah. dollars, but a thousand dollars per person is, yeah. is the amount of money that's being recommended here. I believe. Yeah. Anyways, okay. okay. Well, I mean, well, let, let's continue so, here in this presentation. He got me to it. Uh, okay. We're also um, through this comprehensive initiative to promote uh, nursing in the state of Vermont launching a marketing campaign to promote enrollment in career and technical education programs. And this campaign would uh, include an emphasis on healthcare careers specifically and the trades. Uh, further, the budget proposal um, does, does propose continued investment in the successful Vermont Housing Improvement Program, uh, which does help private owners of vacant rental properties to bring units back onto online for housing and to increase the housing available in the state. We've certainly heard uh, regularly from healthcare employers that housing is, is, a, is a key barrier um, for people looking to live and work in Vermont in the healthcare system. We also propose the, the, the um, the governor also proposes investing in a new private home builder program, which is focused on creating missing middle housing for moderate income home buyers specifically. 
And child care is another area that I know that the committee is familiar with that poses uh, barriers to recruiting and retaining uh, Vermonters to work in the healthcare workforce. The administration has proposed a comprehensive package of investments to continue investing in the accessibility and affordability of early care and learning pre-kindergarten in a mixed delivery system, as well as to enrich after school and summer programs for youth in pre-K through grades 12. So that's, that is a high level overview of the package of initiatives that do come together through uh, the budget proposal, as well as the budget adjustment specifically. Um, coming together through those avenues to support uh, healthcare workforce in the state of Vermont. And as you, again, are also familiar, the Healthcare Workforce Development Strategic Plan has a number of initiatives and recommendations within it that are also uh, in play uh, today. I know you've heard an update from the Office of Professional Regulation uh, pertaining to the work that they are convening around um, inc increasing nurse educators uh, in the state of Vermont, increasing the number of slots available for persons to pursue um, education and training to be nurses and work in the state of Vermont. I'll end my slideshow. Okay. Uh, so I think we have some more questions. If you don't, if you're, yeah, so this question is good. Um, so, uh, Representative Hogan. Uh, hi, Ina, thank you for that. So, I have a question. Um, it was the five million for the two scholarship program or the scholarship and loan forgiveness. It was 15 million for the tax incentives which I think gets me to 20 million. So can you tell me how the rest of the 13 million is split out between the uh, marketing campaign and the uh, other options, the other recommendations? Oh, I want, I want to clarify that the $33 million is, was, was proposed only for the recruitment retention and training initiatives. And so the 33 million the, um, is only for those initiatives. The nurse scholarships, loan repayment, tax incentives are all additive to the 33 million. Uh, and then the dollars um, proposed you know, for investing in, in uh, um, uh, supporting the Agency of Commerce and Community Development in marketing activities are additive to those as well. And I don't have um, I don't have that number off the top of my head in terms of uh, any investments in the marketing campaign specifically. Could you get that for us or have someone get it to us? That'd be great. Thank you. So just for my own clarification, the 33 million for retention and recruitment and retention, that is in the BAA. Is that right? That's correct. The, yep. And the others, the other, the other dollar amounts are in the FY23 budget. Is that the distinction? Yeah, that's what it says. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So can I clarify? Yeah. Right. So is there um, and I apologize, I it says right here fiscal year 2022. So it's I apologize. Right. Just so you know, this weekend I made the same mistake and was emailing. Okay. And I, and I finally I got <laughs> Sorry about that. We should read a little bit better. Um, uh, so is there any money in the fiscal year 23 budget for recruitment, retention, and training? Three million. No. The recruitment, retention, and training is proposed in the FY22 budget adjustment. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Representative Goldman. Uh, thank you. Uh, maybe take down your slides so we can see you. That would be wonderful. Oh, are they not down? I'm sorry. I thought I took them down. Stop. Uh, there, you go. There. there you go. There you go. Thank you. That's, that's great. Thank you so much. Um, I'm, I have two questions. My first question is sort of taking off where Mari went. Is there anything in the governor's budget about primary care workforce? So beyond just nurses, um, pediatricians, um, family practice docs, 
APRMs to do primary care specifically? The recruitment and retention proposal is a broader proposal than for, for uh, just nurses and that those that $33 million investment that was proposed is, is broader than for just the nurse workforce and could include, um, for instance, um, it, 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 it could include a broader workforce. Certainly there are um, areas of the system where there is a particular need in terms of um, home health care, skilled nursing facility care, um, certainly rise to the top as examples um, of that additional, of, of where there uh, could be additional investment in recruitment and retention. So I'm hearing you say that it's it's really still for nursing and not necessarily, it could include primary care, but might not, or I'm just wondering if the governor and you have thought about primary care specifically. It is, it is not exclusive to nursing. Um, it, it certainly could include mental health, substance use disorder, home health care providers, home uh, independent support providers um, are, are some key examples there. Um, and, and so it was, it was not envisioned as a specific program to support primary care. However, it, it could, it could um, provide for some uh, primary care support. Great, thank you. And I was also wondering on your slides eight and nine, um, when you were talking about broader strategies, that seemed more general to the workforce and not necessarily focused on nursing, if I interpret it right. I just wanted to make sure. Those you broader- say, Yeah, go ahead, sorry. Yes, I think, I. Uh, so those, yes, the as we experience workforce shortage, certainly across sectors in the state, there are a number of strategies and initiatives that apply and can be applied across uh, sectors. And, and we can use our current workforce development um, tools and expertise, both to support you know, the nurse workforce specifically, but also to support workforce development in those other sectors. I think childcare, housing, are key issues across sectors and are not uh, and are not separate and distinct. For instance, for uh, healthcare workers specifically, or for nurses even more specifically, I think that those investments are important for workforce development on the whole. Thank you. So you know, I have a specific question. I think it's in line maybe with what uh, Representative Goldman was asking, but but more specific, we. Uh, we created and funded, I believe it was five uh, primary care scholarships for primary care physicians mm -hmm. at the Larner School of Medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think they're just now, uh, it was like three, three years ago or something along that line. And, uh, is that, so that funding is now, we were reported that, that there are new medical students receiving that funding. Is that, is that embedded in the base budget somewhere or is that, did that not get refunded? So I'm, I'm confused about whether that's already in place and separate from what we're talking about here today or if it's... Um, I can come back to you with, with that information. I believe that that was that, that scholarship program was also started um, through or was established through Act 155 of 2020, um, and that it is. Uh, I see Jen. Jen has, is shaking her head, and she can probably clarify the um, how the program is uh, ongoing or not. Hey, Jen, would you help us with that if you have any information? Sure. Um, Jennifer Carby, Legislative Council. I don't think I can answer whether it's fund. I think the funding question would need to be answered um, either by the administration or by the appropriations folks. Uh, but this was a, a program that was created in Act 155. It is in statute. It was amended fairly significantly last year. And scholarships are for up to 10 student medical students annually who um, commit to practicing in a medical specialty area 
and with some other um, for which for the moment at least is focused on primary care. Um, but the program is, I mean, it, you've, you've appropriated funds for it in each of the last two budget years. So I don't know if it is now somehow embedded in the health department statute uh, or a budget request, or if it would need to be a new appropriation. Dan, do you have the figure that was, what, what the figure was that was appropriated in each of the two years when we did appropriate funds? Uh, I can look it up fairly easily, but I don't, um, I don't know offhand. I'm searching in last okay. year's. Okay. So, I, yeah, I, I can forward. Nolan, I asked this question over the weekend. Nolan sent me the language. Okay. From last year. And do you know the Yeah, amount? so for last year, it was, it was one point a little over 1.2 million in global commitment funds so that's the state federal you know combined amounts um, and I can look at the year before it happened in in the budget each year okay so if if there's any way you know to determine whether that's somehow in base budgeting for the Department of Health or somewhere else apart from the initiatives that you've outlined, that would be very helpful to understand. Uh, or if it's not, it'd be helpful to understand. Um, and I think there was, there may be confusion as to whether because it was put into statute that it actually therefore became part of a base funding or whether it has to be separately authorized in each fiscal year, so. Representative Yeah, the, the the amount that Jen just referenced last year, it, it actually says that amount is transferred to, to VSAC in fiscal year 2022. So my understanding is that was like that was the carryover. That's so that 2022 may be funded already through that. But we, we do need to yeah, verify be very that. Helpful to, to but tease, that's the language, that the language says fiscal year 2022. Um, right, it was in the, the FY22 Budget Act. That's this year. Nolan. Isn't that this year? Yes, and that is the current, that is the fiscal year that year? ends in June. Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. I always know Nolan might know. Yes. Uh, yeah, for the record, the online one joint fiscal office, uh, Representative Donahue is correct. I sent her the numbers yesterday. Uh, so Jen's correct. It's 2.2 .2 gross a million in global commitment. Um, and then there was language in the CAOS passed BAA that basically that said this funding shall remain available to VSEC until expended. And if needed, fiscally neutral adjustments to spending authority shall be included in future budget legislation. I don't know if that translates to base or not, but it definitely sounds like intent. So I'm, I'm still left a little confused. I don't know mm -hmm. if others are or not, but I am. As to yeah. so can you translate what you said to is there money in this in this upcoming? Did the BAA put money into the upcoming fiscal year, or is that simply to authorize money for the current fiscal year? I think the BAA money was to authorize that if it's not spent that it doesn't go away, that it just keeps carrying forward. So it doesn't get scooped up and used for something else. Okay. It's, and that's as an example, when people ask about carry forward, if you didn't spend the money, what happens? So that, that creates it as a carry forward, but it doesn't, uh, but it doesn't appropriate new dollars. There's not, the BAA isn't appropriating new dollars. So if that was to be, if there was money needed in addition to whatever is carried forward, there would, that would require an additional appropriation, I assume. Yeah, I, I, I was getting, I asked this question yesterday of some other folks and I was getting mixed signals about whether this was base going forward or if it's just a single appropriation. So I will get clarification for you on that. Okay, so that's, that's the question I think we were asking Ina as well, whether there was somehow it was in the base and we're not just seeing it. Yeah, I think that would be very helpful to understand. Yeah. Okay. Representation? Yes, Ina. Um, I have several questions here. 
Um, relocation programs for nurses. What are they? Are they moving nurses from out of state to Vermont? Are we paying for their moves? Uh, could you explain a little bit about that? How much is that has been allocated there? That's specifically, that's the relocation program in the agency of uh, commerce and community development that supports uh, relocation for workers coming uh, to Vermont. We would like to see, um, you know, certainly that program be able to accommodate and include um, persons who are working in Vermont uh, or coming to work in Vermont as, um, as uh, nurses in the, in the healthcare field and with healthcare employers. Okay, so it's in the big, it's, it's a broader, picture, I guess. It's not just nurses, it's yeah. a lot of others. Okay. Um, and uh, the housing issue. Um, what are the incentives for nurses to get housing? Um, are we providing some sort of um, loans for, for nurses to purchase homes? And I see where invest in a new private home builder program. Are we subsidizing builders who then sell these homes at a, at a lower cost than what they're being paid for? Do you have any information on that and how it affects our nurses, our nursing core here or attracting nurses here or keeping them here? Uh, again, it certainly is, it is a broader issue, but one that is also true for the nurse workforce that uh, housing in, in Vermont can be difficult to find. Um, and it, so housing in Vermont can be difficult to find. And so these two programs are not exclusive at all for nurses, but they are programs that can increase the housing available in the state of Vermont. Um, certainly nurses could take advantage of those programs, you know, take advantage of the, of the additional housing created by those programs, as could any, any other um, Vermonter take advantage of the additional housing created by those programs. The uh, strategy is certainly to acknowledge, or more than acknowledge, but to address what is a shortage of available housing, which is certainly a recruitment barrier when, when uh, looking to bring more people into the workforce here in the state of Vermont, people are looking uh, certainly to establish housing as a part of being uh, in the workforce. So there are, not, there are no uh, specific dollars um, for nurses to support nurses um, uh, uh, housing specifically. It is a broader so is, strategy. This is another, this is one of the broader initiatives rather than a nursing specific initiative, but it certainly could include nurses, but it's not, they're, they're, well, not, they're not targeted to nurses at this point. But I mean, if we're trying to attract nurses, chair, sure. so, and I'm not arguing with you, but I'm just saying, I'm just <laughs> yeah, trying okay. to describe what yeah. I think, what, what I think yeah. is being said here. Yeah. Yeah. But that'll, that'll you, be our you, discussion tomorrow. You paint a picture that, you know, all these incentives for nurses and yet it's, it's broader. It's not specifically designed for the nursing corps. That, that, I think that's accurate. And I think that's what we're hearing. Okay. And then do we know where these, uh, uh, where these um, homes will be built? Do we have an idea? Do we have any uh, home builders that we've, you know, um, started asking for uh, information on designs and uh, qualifications, things like that. Those are really good questions. I, I don't have those answers for you today. I can I can look into that. You know, those the details of the of the program and how how far in the planning. Um, uh, the program is, but certainly the proposal is is to support uh, those you know, is to support the creation of of new housing for moderate income individuals. But I can I can definitely get back to you with some more information about that program. And do we have loan guarantees for nurses? You know, who want to buy their home and settle in Vermont? I mean, here again. Um, here again, we say 
I mean, your title of your slides here, recruitment, retention, and training, um, healthcare workforce development, strategic plan implementation. It just seems very broad and, and uh, it doesn't really seem to me anyways, to be addressing the issue of trying to get nurses into Vermont and keep them here. So we have, we have, what we have in front of us is what's being proposed by the administration. Uh, we are also looking at other initiatives that um, we may uh, add to this or uh, review these proposals and, and see which ones we want to prioritize and support. Um, I have one, I have another question, Ina, because I, uh, in the, in the healthcare workforce uh, development plan, there was a proposal, I believe, specifically to, and I'm not going to get the language quite right, but I'm remembering it, to house, to, to put, put a position within the agency human services to help coordinate uh, and help folks access supports through the healthcare workforce. Can other people help me that's with the, that? That's the liaison. Yeah. 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 Is that what well, that? Is that that's that's recommended in the healthcare workforce yeah. strategic plan? Yeah. And my question is: Is that position anticipated to be created in the governor's budget? I I I think I need to clarify that there is not a position um, proposed in the in the healthcare workforce development strategic plan to sit within the agency of human services. We did not. Maybe I misunderstood something. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Art, I mean, Representative Peterson. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, you know, I see as a retention uh, item, as retention bonuses. Is there any um, uh, plan afoot to, to, add, to, for a broad increase so that someone coming in could see that, you know, we're, we're gonna, being a nurse can, can make me a little bit of money above what they get now. In other words, just a bonus is maybe a one-year shot versus a substantial increase in salary that has a, has a longer lasting, uh, I know it's a budget item, but to, to so somebody can look at this and say, you know, this is a, a, right, a significant rise in pay for, for nursing. We, you're correct that the retention bonus is not a, a is is not a proposal for an increase in in base pay for nurses. The intent of the program is certainly to acknowledge that, uh, given the the current workforce challenges. Uh, and uh, that there's a, a very you know, near term need uh, to do what we can to certainly promote uh, nurses and others working in the health and human services in Vermont uh, to remain in their positions, uh, to incentivize them in the near term um, to continue on in the workforce, uh, recognizing that longer term strategies uh, likely will also need to be employed um, for recruitment and retention initiatives. Do, when you develop a plan like this, do you have a, a number in mind of nurses that you hope to attract? I mean, is there any sort of, I know that's probably very difficult to do, but I, I didn't know if there was any ballpark figure that you maybe would be able to so for impact. What would they be the impact? Yes. Uh, impact be, yeah. <laughs> I think that's a real that's a really excellent question. In in putting together this proposal, certainly uh, there are key objectives to try to again retain those nurses already working in the workforce, so that the workforce does not experience uh, additional attrition. So to do uh, to provide um, funding for employers to innovate. Uh, around uh, retaining employees to reduce additional attrition. Um, and I, I certainly we propose something that could be flexible for those employers that may not be um, most concerned about attrition, but could be very concerned about uh, bringing, you know, recruiting uh, additional 
additional um, staff into roles. And so we don't have a specific target there um, because we have these kind of multi-factors at play, but I do think that that is a good question. Thank you. Okay, um, I, I have one other question and then I obviously Representative Golden has a question. We're gonna, I, I'm gonna suggest we stop in the next five minutes. Uh, then, uh, but in the course of your analysis of the workforce strategic plan or these workforce initiatives, I, one of the things I'm always interested in is uh, that we invest our state dollars in efforts that result in workers being in Vermont, as opposed to training people in nursing programs or other programs. Uh, for instance, the, the, our, our, our initiative with the Larner School of Medicine is to uh, have people uh, practice in Vermont after they've you know, as an, and we providing the scholarships as an incentive to work in primary care, and in exchange they work back in Vermont. And I think that's part of this initiative that you've talked about. But in terms of just generally at this point in time, do we have any sense of whether uh, each of the programs, like at UVM, at Norwich, or Castleton, or other places, do, do we have any good sense of nurses who are being trained now? In, trained in Vermont, are they work, or do they end up working in Vermont? I, I've heard various descriptions of, and how to measure that. But I didn't, know if, I didn't know if you had access to any of that information in the course of any, any analysis that you were part of. That, that is, that's an area that we're actively uh, analyzing and looking into. And I don't have that, I don't have you know, analysis for you for you across the board for all the nursing programs in the state of Vermont. Again, it's an area we're actively looking into and trying to understand. But I can share that, um, for instance, um, in the programs offered by the Vermont Technical Center, um, what I've understood and what's been reported to me is that most of the graduates you know, in that program are already working in Vermont and that that program has an 85 to 90% rate of students who stay and work in Vermont as, as nurses. That's the Vermont Technical College, mm -hmm. as opposed Correct. to Vermont Technical, I think it's just a, yeah. yeah, Vermont Technical College nursing program, okay. Yeah, okay. But that's, that's a, a really great question. And it's one of the pieces that um, we're certainly exploring uh, with the nursing education programs as we uh, engage with them along with the Office of Professional Regulation around uh, increasing the number of students educated in Vermont. Right, right. Okay, Representative Black? Just for my, refresh my memory, where is the nursing program at VTC located currently? And is it only at one site, Williston and Randall? Uh, so, so it's at both sites. Okay. okay, thank you. And I think that Castleton has program in uh, yeah a separate yeah. program from Castleton the, is yeah. Well, yeah. Um, Representative Goldman. Thank you, Ina. Um, I'm wondering what number the administration is working with to understand the gap in our nursing workforce. Does the administration sort of, how do, how do you doing this job get your head around this problem? So I'll answer that in a couple of ways. Um, it, you know, certainly the workforce development strategic plan uh, does emphasize that we need to bring together different sources of healthcare data to be able to better understand and model, um, you know, certainly um, supply and demand and to understand gaps. And those pieces of data are coming from different areas of, of state government. For instance, the Department of Labor, the um, uh, Department of Health in the survey that uh, the Department of Health um, in the in the information that it collects through, re, le, through the relicensure survey. And so we, we recognize that we uh, need a better way to look at these pieces of information in combination as they obviously do inform one another and would inform and better un, inform our working understanding of 
of gaps and, and assessments. I mean, that being said, we also um, are looking at you know, key indicators that suggest um, certainly where there are gaps in the workforce, such as the increasing reliance on traveling staff by facilities in the state of Vermont, including hospitals, but not exclusive to hospitals by any means, also including traveling staff that are working at skilled nursing facilities and maybe working with health providers. So um, those are other areas where we look to understand um, with you know, certainly uh, the changes in the composition of the healthcare workforce um, with respect to the proportion of full-time employed staff versus traveling staff. And I have some information on that front that I can um, follow up with you. I'll send it along to the committee. Um, I'll send it along to the committee right after this. If I may follow up. Please. I'm just curious, you know, you talk about a lot of different um, state government sort of agencies being involved, which I understand is totally complex. So who, who do you think understands the whole problem? Who has the overarching view of what's going on throughout state government and throughout the state in terms of the nursing workforce? Oh, well, I... I think it's a collective point of view. I mean, I think there's different expertise and pieces of information that are coming from, from you know, different areas and that together that can create the collective, that can create the collective view. Coming to where? When you say coming, I'm, I'm just wondering who collects it all in one place. Maybe it can't be possible, I don't know. I'm, Remember, this is my first term, so I can be ignorant. Well, I, I think that's exactly the question that the advisory group um, discussed. The, the, so there is an advisory group that was established um, to advise on the healthcare workforce development strategic plan. And a key area of discussion for this advisory group was the data that describes the healthcare workforce does live in different places. And so the committee would recommend that those data be brought together in, in a healthcare workforce data hub, which I think is consistent with your, with your question, which is, well, if it's all in different places, then how is there any one view of it? So the report does make that recommendation um, uh, there. Um, and I think that there's you know, further consideration that needs to be um, we need to, you know, further consider how to um, implement such a recommendation. But the advisory group again discussed it repeatedly, and and put forward that that recommendation. So uh, has the administration funded the data hub? That is not a proposal. Um, no, that is not included in the. No. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Representative Donahue. So I, I guess that answer right there maybe uh, answers mine because I know that the data hub was sort of one piece of it, but then there was also a recommendation around do, creating the ability to do supply and demand modeling. And I was gonna ask if there were any recommendations from the administration on pursuing that or funding, but if the data hub isn't being funded, I guess we can assume the supply and demand modeling is also not, or is that uh, a consideration? The supply and demand modeling, um, no, is, is also not included. Um, okay, thank you. Okay. I think, I think we'll stop there. Uh, thank you for spending time with us and helping us understand what is being proposed in the administration's uh, healthcare workforce initiatives uh, and, and, and helping us understand where there are some things that were in the strategic plan but are not, not included in the uh, uh, funding recommendations at this point in time.
it's, it's actually helpful for us to be able to articulate, have you help us articulate what's what's there at this point and what is not. And uh, it's helpful for us as we look at what we might want to recommend as well. So thank you so much. And uh, we'll continue to be in touch in your role, which uh, I would just say, <laughs> Uh, we, we, we're, we're asking lots of questions and it's at uh, times frustrating because not everything that uh, is available uh, to us, but uh, I want to just express appreciation for the work that you're doing as the director of health healthcare reform. So thank you very much. So Nolan popped up. I don't know if you heard. Nolan, were you, I'm sorry, Nolan, was there something further that you were wanting to chime in on? Not, not at this time. I'll, I'll communicate with various committee members. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, I think at this point, I think we should probably go offline.